I have created a Sicilian menu for you. Lunch, dinner, whatever you like to do with this menu. This is good, it's very Sicilian, and I really like it. There are so many options in Sicilian cuisine, but I've found this menu uh, easy, you know, because we're starting with a difficult recipe and then we go easy on you, you know? So I don't want to have too many difficult recipes. The antipasti for this Sicilian menu, of course, is the Sicilian arancini, classic Sicilian arancini. Now, this is more of a Catania style arancini from the south of Sicily. Uh, you can choose any fillings you want if you don't want bolognese. Uh, this is my choice. Uh, it, takes, it takes time, it's uh, more time consuming. It takes about maybe two days if you want to do it right. You know, it's a process of, you know, over two days process to make arancini the way I like it. But watch it and Maybe make it. It's arancini time or arancine in Palermo. This is a classic arancino from Sicily made with love just for you. To make the Sicilian arancini like Vincenzo's plate, we need, starting from the rice, 500 grams of arborio rice, one quarter of chopped onion, a nice amount of pecorino or parmigiano reggiano, 120 grams of nice butter, and one liter of vegetable stock. For the filling, we are using 500 grams of a top quality beef mince, like ground beef, 100 grams of peas, and that's not because of Gordon Ramsay, it's actually nice to use peas. One tube or can of tomato paste, okay? It's about 120, 130 grams one chopped carrot, one chopped celery stick, half onion chopped into pieces, fresh basil, then we're gonna use a beautiful fresh mozzarella, you can use buffalo or you can use fior di latte, and we're also gonna use some dry mozzarella which we are going to shred. Then we need some extra virgin olive oil, salt and pepper. To crumb the arancini we have two ways which I'm going to show you. First, we need fresh breadcrumbs. Then, before we fry in sunflower oil, we can do the pastella, which is a mix of flour and, and water, or the eggs. A business will never use eggs because it's too expensive. But to be honest, I like the eggs because it's crispier and tastier. Let's go. First thing we wanna do is to put about four or five tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Let's do the risotto. So what we wanna do is we wanna put the onion in there, we are going to add one liter of vegetable stock, which is here. There we go. Put 120 grams of butter in the pot and let's wait until it melts. We're going to add one tablespoon of the tomato paste. So when the stock starts to boil, we are going to add the rice, the arborio rice. Guys, always make sure you always stir the rice. See, it's almost ready. We want the liquid to go, but we don't want the rice to get stuck at the bottom. When the rice is ready, we put a nice amount of butter, we let it melt, and then we mix it with the rice. Okay, we're gonna spread the rice on top of this tray, just like that. Now we gently spread it, but don't push too hard. We do not want to break the rice, okay? We're gonna put the pecorino or parmigiano on top. So I'm gonna keep this cold naturally until it gets cold, but it will take about one hour or in the fridge for about half an hour. Up to you. Now let's cook the filling for our bolognese arancini. Okay, here we go. We have a generous amount of extra virgin olive oil. Now we do the soffritto. So we have the celery, carrots and the onions. So what we do now is we're gonna put the beautiful ground beef, the minced beef. See the meat is nice and brown. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna put the peas. We're going to put a tomato paste. Put the tomato paste everywhere. Just break some basil leaves in there and break it with your hands, please. A little splash of water. What we wanna do now, we wanna gently cook it on a medium low heat for about 20 minutes, okay? To a maximum of 30 minutes. One thing we wanna do now is we wanna be generous with the salt and pepper. This is something I've been doing lately. 
I put just a little bit of butter, just not much, just a little bit of butter in there, just to make it a touch creamier, okay, at the end, okay? All right, now let's cool down this beautiful meat filling for our arancini. Now, we want this to cool down, okay? We don't want this to be too hot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna place it in the fridge until the rice is ready. I would say at least one hour in the fridge. Guys, it's time to assemble the arancini. We wanna have a bowl with water because our hands need to be wet all the time, okay? Like when you make meatballs, you want wet hands. Here we got the cheese, here we have the meat filling. So what we do now, we get the cold rice and the rice needs to be cold, guys. When I say cold, it needs to be cold. We do this on the palm of your hand. Now we get the meat. Put the meat in there. Oh yeah, just be generous, please. Put the meat in there. Be generous with the cheese. The cheese needs to go everywhere, okay? You want the cheese to be everywhere. And now that we have the filling here, let's put a little bit more. A bit generous, please. Let's put more cheese on top. Now that we have this full of cheese, let's get the rest of the rice and we put it on top, okay? We put it on top, close this side, and now we make the ball. And when you make the ball, you want to press. You want to press because you get all the moisture out and you make it tight as tight as possible. But what I can say to you is that you get lots of moisture coming on your hands right now, okay? So what we need to do now is we need to make the arancini into balls. We're gonna place it in here. We're gonna place it in this. So guys, what we do now is we need to put them in the fridge. I would say overnight. Now, if you wanna do the pastella, which is basically flour and water, the most popular way to do in Sicily, you just add water to flour and then you mix. You mix until you get a sort of uh, cream. Put the arancino through the pastella, just everywhere, just like that. All the breadcrumb, just like that, see? Breadcrumb goes everywhere. And now we put the arancino on a tray with baking paper. We start by frying the arancini. I've got one, I've got two. To fry the arancini, you're looking at between five to seven minutes, okay? We want them to uh, become nice and brown on the outside, but we also want them to cook on the inside. Now, if your arancini gets darker before the five minutes, if it gets to this color, well, let me tell you, they are ready, okay? You don't need to wait five minutes. They are ready. This is what our restaurant will do. Let's get some nice homemade tomato sauce, if you can. Let's put it at the bottom, beautiful. Then we're gonna place the arancino on top, just like that. A little bit more tomato on top. A sprinkle of pecorino cheese. Oh, we love pecorino cheese. And last but not least, a nice basil leaf. And here we go, the arancino bolognese, it's ready to be served. Guys, this is what we want on the inside, okay? Let's open the arancino. And you want the melting cheese everywhere. Yes, baby. Yes. And now we're ready to eat it. Ah. Mm. The pasta I recommend for this Sicilian menu is the pasta alla norma. There are so many Sicilian pastas I love, like pasta camutica, uh, you know, with the breadcrumbs, or the anchovies pasta, and so many other pastas. But this pasta, the eggplant, you know, pasta alla norma pasta, it's special. This pasta represents Sicily around the world, you know, it's something you must do, you know, you must enjoy in this menu. So. It's pasta alla norma time. One of the most beautiful Mediterranean dishes from Sicily. A 
classic Sicilian pasta from Catania. To make pasta alla norma, we need beautiful pasta, and I'm using caserecce. I really love my pasta alla norma with caserecce shape. You can also use penne, you can use maccheroncini, use fusilli, use anything that you like. Short, I recommend, a short pasta. A nice basil, we need garlic. I'm using two cloves, one per person. I'm making this pasta for two. Ricotta salata. It's a salted ricotta. It's very hard. You can grate it on top, right at the end. Very important ingredient. If you can't find ricotta salata, you can use a normal ricotta. Let it dry a little bit and then you just kind of try and grate it on top of the pasta. It won't be the same thing, but will be as close as possible to this. And then I'm using one can of peeled tomatoes, a small one. You can also use passata, a beautiful homemade passata, which is um, tomato puree. And the most important ingredient, the eggplant. The eggplant is everything for this dish. So the first thing we need to do is to cut the eggplant into strips. I like to cut them into strips because we're going to fry them. Vegetable oil. You can use olive oil, you can use canola oil, anything you want. Now this is at the right temperature and I know that. So I'm going to put one inside to test. It's frying. That's what we want. We're looking at 180 Celsius, okay? And I'm going to put a little bit of the time. Just be careful because the oil can burn, okay? And it should take a few minutes. You will see. When are they ready? Well, they are ready when they become brown. Beautiful. Super golden brown. Peeled tomatoes or passata. And what we do, we want to crush it. You can crush it by hand. You can crush it with a fork. Then we're going to add some salt, okay? Just put as much as you want, okay? I like to be generous with my salt. I'm going to add a nice amount of pepper. And then we mix it well. Mix, 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 mix. In a nice pan, I like to add extra virgin olive oil on a medium low heat. And then we are going to crush our garlic, peeled tomatoes. I just love to use the peeled tomatoes. So what we do is we just put it inside, okay? Put it in. We have nine minutes to cook this sauce at a low, medium low heat. And then we're going to add this, the pasta in it. Before we cook the pasta, we always add a nice, generous amount of rock salt. I like to use rock salt. I need to give the flavor to this water, okay? We are not eating the salt, okay? We are giving the flavor to this water, okay? And now is the time where we're going to add the pasta. And I'm, like, I'm going to use about 300 grams, okay? It's just for the two of us, using 300 grams. And I'll keep the rest for the next time I make pasta, okay? Three quarter of the eggplant that we cooked. So we put them in there. And we keep a little bit on the side, which we are going to use to decorate our pasta. Got some beautiful basil from the garden. It smells so beautiful. So what we want to do is we want to get a mug and get the pasta water. This is very, very, very important for us, okay? Get the pasta water and put it on the side. Pasta water is full of starch, which is very important for our sauce. And what I'm going to do on a low heat, I've got my beautiful sauce here cooking. I'm going to add the pasta in there. Uh, it might look a little bit dry to you, okay? You probably think, oh, that's not enough sauce. But once we're going to add the pasta water, you will see how much this is going to change. Add the pasta water. I put half the mug. We keep cooking in here on a low heat, medium low heat, for another minute, okay? because I want the pasta water to combine with the sauce. And look how nice, look how nice. Look how nice and smooth this pasta is. Look at the water, it disappeared. Look at the sauce, how beautiful it is. Look at that. This is the moment now where we're going to add the ricotta salata, just a little bit of ricotta salata. So I get the ricotta salata here and I just wanna put a little bit in there. I just wanna mix it with the pasta. I want, I want this ricotta to melt in the pasta, okay, before we decorate it. What I want to do right now, see, I want that ricotta to kind of melt, 
to give the extra flavor to the tomato and to your pasta and to the eggplant of course now the eggplant remember we didn't put salt in the eggplant there is no need for salt because we have a lot of flavors in this and the ricotta salata the salted ricotta is salty and it will give the flavor that you want now the most important part we need to plate a beautiful dish we made it with love we need to plate it with love so i get a nice amount here I put it in my plate so this is for two people guys us italians we like to eat pasta this is showing you how simple italian food is how simple italian cuisine is not too much stress simple ingredients but tasty you just need to use the right ingredients guys what we do right now is we're going to decorate it with our eggplants okay so we put it on top just beautifully put it on top and the final touch will be the ricotta salata the salty ricotta just a little bit there uh, just a snowing ricotta that's what you want to do a snowing ricotta beautiful last but not least a nice leaf of basil right there fresh basil and here is how we make a beautiful easy eggplant pasta sicilian style Mm. Cannoli is the most famous Sicilian pastry, one of the most famous in the world. Now, cannoli is not easy to make. It takes time. It, you know, it could be a day or two days process, okay? So what I recommend instead is to have the arancini as the most difficult the recipe, you know, because the pasta is easy. And we can also do the ricotta uh, donuts, which is basically a Sicilian donut called sfinci, Sicilian sfinci. They are very traditional, they're very easy to make, and um, they can replace cannoli unless you want to buy the cannoli from the shop and cheat <laughs> but try this uh, ricotta donuts and this is the video for you ladies and gentlemen today we're going to the south of italy sicily and we are with the cannoli ambassador making sfinci sicilian donuts we're going to be making sfinci the sicilian way and we're going to start with the dough to make the dough for the sfinci we're going to be needing one cup of full cream milk a quarter of a cup of caster sugar three cups of plain flour one cup of fresh ricotta it must be fresh we're going to use two tablespoons of vanilla extract a good vanilla two tablespoons of baking powder two eggs that we're going to lightly whisk and we're going to use about half a cup maybe a little bit more of sultanas we're going to be frying these in vegetable oil and we're going to be finishing them off with some beautiful icing sugar and some fresh honey the first thing we'll do is get the vegetable oil or oil of your choice into a pan and we're going to heat that up to 190 degrees celsius or about 375 fahrenheit if you've got a deep fryer you can set the temperature you can go for gold with that if not i've got a thermometer here We'll be ready to turn it on. The reason we use a lot of oil is because you want the sfinci to swim. They need the space to swim in there so that they cook evenly and perfectly. So to start, we're going to be combining one cup of full cream milk and a quarter of a cup of caster sugar. We're now going to put that onto a medium heat. We're going to stir this until the sugar dissolves, which will take about two to three minutes. Sfinci is something I grew up with. And any good Sicilian, well, we're all good as Sicilians, but any great Sicilian will know just how important Svinci is. So for me, it's a very proud moment to be able to be sharing this recipe with all of you out there. We're now gonna take the heat off because the sugar has dissolved. We'll remove it from the heat and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, we now need to lightly whisk two eggs. Not too much because we are gonna be mixing them in with the milk and sugar. We're now gonna start combining the wet ingredients. So we're gonna put in our milk and sugar that we've dissolved, the two eggs that we've whisked, and we're gonna put in our fresh ricotta. Remember a cup of ricotta. Make sure you use fresh. Now we're gonna whisk this together. Go slow at first, and then it'll start coming together. My nonna always put ricotta in her sfinci. There's different recipes out there, some that don't use it. And my nonna always said it made them lighter. And I agree with her, and why change it? So here we have three cups of plain flour that has been sifted. We're now gonna add to that two teaspoons of baking powder. Make sure you do sift the plain flour because you don't want lumps. Sifting it will resolve all that. Okay, we'll just mix the baking powder in with the plain sifted flour. We're now gonna add two teaspoons of vanilla extract in the egg mixture. 
Okay, we're gonna add our baking powder and flour mixture in all at once. Don't be shy. Okay, we're gonna start stirring it, combining it well. It takes a little bit, but you'll notice when it starts coming together. Rob, there is nothing better than sharing family recipes, you know, and this is very, very important for all of us who want to share your traditions. So, Robert, your nonna would be very proud of you, Robert. Thank you. Yes, she would. She'd be looking down saying, don't get it wrong. <laughs> Especially today, because we're filming it. Especially today, because everyone's going to be seeing this. But no, it was a very special recipe. We knew when nonna made sfinchi, it was a very special occasion. So you can see we've mixed it. There's no more flour. It's all combined really well, and it's ready for the final ingredient to go in. Remember, across Sicily, there's so many different recipes out there for sfinci. You can do savory, you take out the sugar. Friends of mine who come from Liepari, one of the Isioli Islands in Sicily, they make a beautiful savory sfinci with pumpkin and rosemary, which is delicious. But today, I'm sticking with my nonna's tradition and we're gonna be putting in sultanas. Okay, we're gonna add in, it's between half a cup and one cup of sultanas, depending how much you wanna run through. I think it's important that you get plenty of sultanas. So mix them through, don't over mix, just so they're well combined. Remember with every bite, you wanna get the beautiful flavors of the sultanas. You just wanna get them well spread out through the mixture. Okay, we're ready to start frying. I've got my spoon ready. You can use an ice cream scoop or anything that's easy for you to get the mixture in a nice size and we'll go over to the stove and we'll start frying. We're ready to start frying. Now the first one, I always like to call it my test. So drop your sfinchi in, they're gonna form their own shape because sfinchi are allowed to be their own person. They can form whatever shape they like. You see that beautiful frying that's happening? Get a slotted spoon. You can start moving that around. Each sfinchi is about four tablespoons or one ice cream scoop worth of batter and they take about three minutes to cook. It can vary depending how many sfinchi you have in there but about three minutes is generally the guide. That's the color we're looking for. Nice, dark, golden sfinchi. You can do about four at a time in a pan this size. Beautiful, you'll see they drop at first and then that beautiful ricotta starts working. So you'll notice they drop to the bottom then they rise to the top where they can start dancing. So it's important that you stir or you constantly agitate these sfinchi so you can have a look at how they're cooking. You can see one side turns brown, so you can start turning the sfinchi over. These are looking fantastic. You'll see when they've gone beautiful and brown, they've been in there for about three minutes and you'll know to touch. You'll see I'm constantly tapping and I can tell the inside is still gonna be a little bit too battery because I've got a little bit of bounce and you wanna wait until you get a beautiful firm tap the whole way around the sfinchi, which is why we keep stirring and turning them. We're very close now, probably another 30 seconds. I can see I'm getting a good tap on these sfinchi. We can start taking these out now. And remember, just like us, no two sfinchi are exactly the same. Uh, looks like this is the last batch, Rob. This is the last batch, Vincenzo. How many can we make, you think, with this dough? From this recipe, you'll make between 14 and 16, depending how generous you are with the size. Oh, that's true, yeah. And also, I know, how many do you think this can go for per person? Well, look, say one per person. <laughs> Some people like two. Oh, yeah, I need uh, about five. Yeah, I like about four or five. <laughs> you know, Minimum. <laughs> once you get a sfinchi going, you can't stop. It's impossible. Imagine doing this savory and sweet. You uh, can have a sfinchi dinner. You could do a three-course sfinchi meal. <laughs> you can. <laughs> you could do three courses of sfinchi. We're going to get one more out of this batter, and then we'll be finished with our last batch. Mm. You know, the beautiful smell of frying food, Rob, you never go wrong with that. Um, you like when you fry the cannoli, it smells so nice. It's the best in the world. Oh. So we'll drop these onto the paper towel. Okay, let's get these ready to serve. We're going to just bring them over to a platter. This is the big finale. This is what makes sfinchi sfinchi. We're gonna be finishing it off today with some beautiful icing sugar and fresh 
honey. Can you imagine that honey drizzle on these beautiful, light, delicate spinchy? I'm excited. And now we're gonna be sifting this beautiful icing sugar onto the delicate spinach. Gets plenty of icing sugar. Look at that beautiful snow-like icing sugar going on these peaks of the mountains that the spinachy have formed. This is the gold at the end of the spinachy rainbow. Now we're gonna drizzle this honey over the beautiful spinachy. Hey Rob, you know what time it is? Vincenzo, I'm excited. I think it's time to taste. Time for taste tasting. So let's get those beautiful sfinci siciliani. Oh. Can you smell that? I can smell the flavors of the honey combined with the pastry. And it's a beautiful combination that creates this very unique smell. Can we eat it? Well, they're almost too good to eat. Yeah, I know, but we have to eat it. Mine looks like a, looks like a chicken. Looks a bit like Australia. Mm. 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 I hope you enjoyed the Sicilian menu. If you did, make sure you go and buy my I'll make your pasta you can't refuse, the food father <laughs> t-shirt. Everybody's gonna stop you. You can go and click the link below or you go to vincenzosplatestore.com and buy as many as you want. So thank you for watching this video. I will see you in the next Vincenzo's Plate video recipe. E ora si mangia. Vincenzo's Plate. Thank you.